Hey guys, what's up? I just got my camera all ready, which is not a huge deal. It's just getting a fresh battery in and a fresh memory card and I walked out front and realized it's just starting to rain. Did not realize that was about to happen. Well, I was gonna walk, but we're gonna take the side by side now. I actually wanna go out here and take a look at Mama Pig. Hey, big girl. Hey, mama. Oh, this pig is snorting in her sleep. <laughs> She's not interested in talking to me. Well, that's anticlimactic. She is quite pregnant. I don't really know exactly how pregnant, but I know that I remember when we were getting ready to go to the Christmas parade the boar had busted out of the fence that day and we weren't sure if she was going back into heat then he had been in with her for like the previous few weeks so we put him back together that day she could be you know still a few weeks out but she's definitely getting very heavy in her pregnancy pigs are pregnant for three months three weeks and three days so it's easy to remember I mean, I mean obviously she gets fed every day we keep eyes on her but when they get really close to having babies, it's not that I would need to do anything. Pigs are very independent when it comes to farrowing, and we're pretty hands-off. But I like to keep an eye on things, and it's just exciting. See ya, sleepy. <laughs> she is not moving. She's twitched a few times. At first, I was like, hey, you all right? But then I heard her snorting in her sleep. <laughs> So over here in the woods on the other side of the barn, so our mobile home is right there where we currently live. Up there by the pond is where we're building our house. And then right down here in the woods is where we're putting our goat enclosure. Oh, look at this. That. I need to get my pocket knife back in my pocket. I'm in a major habit of carrying it during the garden season, but off season I don't carry it as much. Hmm. I don't know what kind of mushroom this is. I messaged Will. It looks a little old. We get reishis out here in the woods. Never seen one this red, unless that's what can happen when they're old. Something scratched the top of it. Look at that. That's interesting. I texted Will. He said he thought it looked like a very old reishi. The rings on it look like a reishi, but I've never seen one look that red. I may take this one in. If this old, it might not be worth much, but we'll leave that other one on the stump. We have harvested quite a few reishis out here that I've used for tea, but with mushrooms, Will's certified, like, to be able to sell. I can't remember exactly what it is, but there's, like, a certain list of ones that... He's, a, he's certified to sell to like restaurants. He went and got that certification a couple years ago. And so I really trust his knowledge. I, I used to be terrified of mushrooms, but now every time I say that, when I talk about being terrified of mushrooms, I hear Will in my head saying, you're scared of an entire kingdom? He's like very serious about making sure we identify that mushrooms, it's a whole kingdom. <laughs> we should not be scared of a whole kingdom. <laughs> So anyway, I do exercise a lot of caution, but I do feel very much confidence in what he shares with me is safe because he is very cautious and he knows what he's talking about. Anyway, that's kind of cool. I have to keep an eye on that stump in the future. All right, back to the talk about goats. I got distracted by that mushroom. Maya's got some lumber out here, some fencing. I want to give you guys a little update of the goat situation. So we're putting the goats back here in this wooded area. They'll have a little bit of pasture and, you know, be covered under these trees. It is slightly inconvenient, very slightly, compared to where, like, our new house will be. Um, ideally, in the permaculture principle of zones, you want to have any areas that you're going to be frequenting twice a day, which any milking areas will be frequenting twice a day. You really want them, like, within the very immediate distance of your house now this more or less is i mean we are orienting the barn to face the back of the house i mean we can more or less look out of the back of the house and see back in here the reason we're choosing this space over any place we may be able to establish closer to the house is that 
we have really hot summers and I just feel like the goats will be better off with these shade trees versus putting them up closer to the house in full sun where there's absolutely no shade. Um, they'll, they will be happier overall in this space. Plus goats like brush, um, this is a good space for that. So I wanna give you guys like a very quick rundown on the goat situation. I shared back in the fall that we were planning on getting goats again. Um, if you missed that, here's the Cliffs notes. I had goats for a very long time. They were kind of my entry into farm animals. I loved keeping goats, but when we moved here, um, I was going through something of a health crisis. I was having a really hard time keeping up. We'd got a dairy cow which was providing our family with tons of milk. I ended up giving my goats away to multiple different families. Um, and it was absolutely the right mood for the time. I have talked to my friend Amanda about potentially getting a buck from her, a buckling that comes from my old goats uh, to kind of bring those lines back in because they're solid lines, but also just for nostalgia's sake. But I made the right decision. Sometimes different seasons of your life, you're going to have different needs. It's very important to homestead and grow food for your needs. Um, I think a lot of people get kind of off track on that and they start doing what they think they should do or what they thought they should do in a previous season. It's very important to do what you actually need to make this a sustainable lifestyle. I'm way more healthy and in better shape than I was a few years ago whenever I rehomed my goats and I miss them I really miss having goats um, so my goals were that I wanted to get dairy goats again I definitely wanted a dairy breed I have tested it out I can't drink our cow's milk I'm not allergic but I do have some issues uh, that come from my ongoing health issues and autoimmune stuff and different things that I deal with and I've found cow's dairy, even the raw A2 dairy that we have, to be fairly inflammatory, especially in any regular usage. But I found that I can actually drink goat's milk without it bothering me. So that kind of opened the door. I miss the goats. The bottom line is I love our farm. I love that we get to do this. I love that we get to share things on such a large scale and produce food for multiple families. But sometimes I miss kind of the small and intimate homesteading thing. And I'm not prepared to cut off everything that we're doing and scale it all back down. I don't feel like that's what we're supposed to do. But within this big system, I kind of wanted something small and intimate that was just for our own personal use. So I decided to get a couple of goats. Two or three was my goal. Oh goodness, bless me, I had a little sneezing fit. I gotta get my brain back. <laughs> Sneeze like crazy. Oh, I turned the camera off. I wanted something small, that's what I decided. I want something small that I can manage. I want that intimate connection to the homestead. So it is for the purpose of the food that they produce with the milk. It's also for the purpose, sometimes it's just good to do what sets your heart on fire and makes you feel passionate. So I started shopping for goats in the fall. I um, actually found a connection that I was going to be able to potentially get some goats through this February and that's still kind of up in the air like he's I've talked to the guy he's kind of working some things out I didn't push I didn't shop any further because we weren't ready so Maya told me today he just gathered up all the materials he sat down the other day and kind of conceptualized the goat barn that he's going to build and he's going to be sharing videos of that over on his channel Maya's workshop um, but I've not been looking for goats at all I'm not even 100% sure that I've got goats lined up I'm pretty sure just no money's changed hands which obviously when no money's changed hands things can be unsure but um, either way, if the goats that I have mostly lined up <laughs> without it being concrete, if that falls through, um, I'll start looking around and shopping again once we're ready. In the past, I have made, I don't want to call it a mistake. I think it's been fine. It's worked out. I have got ahead of myself many times and brought home, am brought home animals before we had the infrastructure to house them or functionally take care of them like I need not only do I need a place to house goats if these goats are in milk which the ones I think I'm getting are going to be in milk or from what I understand we're waiting for them to kid right now I need a place to milk them like immediately as soon as I bring them home so I need those functional spaces in order I have historically not always waited for that and it just makes things harder 
I understand sometimes like a deal or an opportunity comes up that maybe you feel that it's best to jump on it before you have everything in order. That's fine. That's how you want to do it. I just didn't really want to do it that way. But we are very close to getting it in order, which I'm very excited. So we're going to be fencing in back here, building a barn. The opening, it's going to be like a three-sided barn opening eastward. I think I think Maya said he's going to do two stalls and then like one milking room. And the milking room will have the stanchion and then we'll be able to store like feed in there whatever we need um that is going to be a closed room it may have a window for light because i'm not 100 percent sure if we're going to be running mil uh, electricity out here i think it's more just going to be pretty rudimentary but with a window we'll be able to have light maybe he'll run a cord out here to do a light we're not trying to heat it or cool it or anything fancy like that i'm not trying to have refrigeration out here um it's mostly the reason why I wanted it to be closed in is just so it wouldn't be so terribly cold in the winter. I'm extremely excited. I have actually been so thoroughly looking forward to having these goats and the routine that they're going to provide. I love something that provides structure. It really helps me. You know, we have our systems in place for our dairy cows, as I said. That's gotten a little bigger than my romantic homesteading notion. It's good. I'm glad that we're doing it. Um, I love our systems. I love our farm. I love the place where it is. It's an incredible blessing to get to help so many people. But sometimes like my little homesteading heart just really misses the slow, simple, unplugged nature of how I used to experience our farm. And I don't necessarily want to go back as a whole, but it's okay to have certain things that are really just for the passion of your heart. So before too long, we'll be coming back here in the mornings to milk goats. I'm just certain of it. Oh, hey sheep. How are you? I was gonna come out here and try to move these pins. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work. We'll try. Hey there. How are you? I'm only average at moving these things when they're on the flat ground. <laughs> Whenever they're angled like this, I'm not great at it. They're actually pretty heavy. Um, Maya, I thought it was easy because I watched Maya do it. Turns out he's a lot stronger than I am. <laughs> the first time I came out here, I was like, oh, I'll move him, no big deal. I was like, oh wait, these are actually extremely difficult to move for, for me. So we're putting them on new grass at least once or twice a day. I mean, they have hay, but obviously they prefer whatever is fresh growing. The sheep are all blowing their coats. It's actually probably a benefit for them to be in these, these little pens because it gives them something solid to rub their coats off on. These are hair sheep, so this is not harvestable fiber. With wool sheep, you would shear them. We're actually discussing potentially getting an electric net out like this these sheep are trained to an electric net so we're considering putting all of the girls back in with a ram just to make sure that everybody is bred i am fairly certain at least two of these girls are bred they all four had been exposed to the ram before coming here and they told us when we got them that the earliest that they would be lambing would be like january which obviously we're like now to the end of february and nobody's given birth which doesn't mean that they're not bred but we were thinking about potentially putting them all back in together in one electric fence just to make sure that if somebody got missed in the breeding sessions <laughs> that we could make sure that they were covered. Sure does make them happy to have some fresh grass to eat. And it sure does make me happy to see them happy. They do look really scraggly though. This my, our our other sheep that we had last year, which they're older now, but they looked really scraggly last year. Now watching them all go through this. I take Lulu and Bear on walks like we'll go down the driveway and Lulu likes to try to eat their fur and it, Gross.
Looky here, stop at the asparagus bed. I see a few different little stalks popping up. There's three right there. I was actually thinking I may lay some compost out on top of this just to make sure everything has the nutrients that it needs. This soil's pretty solid, but it wouldn't hurt to put a little compost on it. We're gonna close up the greenhouse before I go in for the evening. My little sister is in town with her family. She probably won't come on any videos. That's not really her thing. She doesn't even like do Facebook and stuff like that, which I think is awesome. More power to her really, <laughs> but. Oh my goodness, what happened here? Hmm, I'm guessing that this was probably a cat. I know not all cats are buttheads, but some of mine really are. This is the kind of thing they do. Knock your stuff around, pottery. If I leave pottery around, my cats will knock it off. Took my boys and my sister and her family, my little niece, to the zoo here in Columbia, uh, South Carolina, it's close by. And um, my little niece is, she's almost 10 months old. She's so freaking cute. And she is saying words, like multiple words, which my children are old enough now that it's been, a, it's been enough time since they were infants that I'm just enamored by infants. Like, I remember a period where I'd had little babies for so long that it was like, cool, you have a baby, I have babies too, like whatever. But now enough time has passed that I am once again just completely undone by infants. And... My little niece is in a phase where she likes cats and she says cat and she loves obviously the cats inside and she knows dog also but sometimes she'll call dogs cat also and it's hilarious because when you're like no dog and she's like cat <laughs> she's just like I don't know what she's communicating but we went to the zoo today and she loved all the animals. It was her first time to the zoo. She loved all the animals, but she really loved the meerkats because as soon as she heard us say meerkat, she perked up. She was so excited. That was like the end of our rounds around the zoo. And she was done prior to that. But then she heard meerkat and she set up cat, cat. And she saw the meerkat. So we had to sit there for about 10 or 15 minutes for her to get her fill of the, the cats at the zoo. <laughs> I have multiple little tomato babies up. Look at that. Lots of babies. Happy birthday, little guys. I just came out here thinking, I need to close everything up before it gets dark. And then I decided to look at the forecast because I hadn't looked at it today. And it's not even anywhere remotely near freezing tonight. So I'm actually gonna leave this open. It's like gonna be relatively warm overnight and everything in there will be fine. Oh. I love the garden season. I love the warm weather. I love growing stuff. Just makes my heart explode. <laughs> All right, I spy my brother-in-law playing with the cows. Are you play? Are you running with the cows? Is this this is like the South Carolina version of running with the bulls? <laughs> this is. <laughs> she was running up and down the fence with him. I looked over. And there. <laughs> She's such a lover. She loves attention. <laughs> and then this is the bull. This is Bocephus. If he's hanging out over here by the fence, it is probably because one of the jerseys are probably in heat. Their milkshake literally brings the boy to the yard. <laughs> so, and he brings a posse with him. They pulled in behind me. We went to the zoo and I got home earlier. Um, we had to leave early to get, Ben had baseball practice, so um, they just pulled in. I'm going to say farewell. Thank you guys for taking this quick little jaunt around the farm with me today. I bless you guys. Until next time.